What up, this is Logan Murdoch in for Dieter Kurtenbach for three big things after the Warriors just beat up on the Cavs, 129-105. It was a weird five. There was no finals preview, no LeBron James, no even litness in the stands at all to speak of. Um, and the Warriors still went down six at the half. It was a pretty weird game. Kevin Durant had a sh struggled in the second half. Klay Thompson struggled all night. Um, like I said, very weird vibes in Cleveland without LeBron James, who's on the L.A., and without a really good crowd to speak of and a, any good team at all. But uh, let's get to the takeaway. Stephen Curry played really well, had 42 points, 7 assists, and 9 rebounds. Since his return, he's averaging like 33 points, 50% from the field, and 50% from three-point range. Um, he kind of kept the Warriors afloat. Um, to the onset of the game, he was playing really well, um, hitting threes, just putting Colin Sexton on skates. It was a, it was a pretty great display from Stephen Curry, and it just shows how good this team can be when he is in the lineup. And um, it showed once again, and it was a reason why they won so handily. And a lot of that had to do with Stephen Curry. Second takeaway from tonight. Kevin Durant, who played really well in the second half, he finished with a near triple double. He was basically unstoppable in the second half. Um, he was really a big reason for their late run um, in the second half, and they played really well through him. And uh, if they can get him, Clay, and Stefan on the same page, they'll be really dangerous going forward. Obviously, that's a given since they're all all stars, but um, they need Kevin Durant to play like this alongside Stephen Curry. And if he keeps doing this, they'll be just fine. Third takeaway from tonight, um, it's a bit of a, a bit of a combo package. It's Jonas Sarebko and small lineups. Jonas Sarebko played really, really well, um, made all of his shots tonight, and was a plus 25 from the field. He played um, in a lot of the small ball lineups. That's just going to be commonplace until DeMarcus Cousins gets back. Um, he played alongside Alfonso McKinney, Jordan Bell, and a Quinn Cook lineup. Uh, it was a pretty quirky. Steve Kerr said earlier a couple weeks ago that um, he's going to want to play smaller and to get more spacing and he kind of did that and Jarebko played really well I thought going into this game that the Warriors would be um, dominated on the rebounding and they did not they out out rebounded them I believe 46 to 41 um, and it was a really good display and that's something that they're going to need from this uh, ball club as they go forward in the next couple of weeks as they don't have Damian Jones, who's probably out for the season with the shoulder injury, and they do not have bigs. Their tallest big is Kevin Durant, who was typically a perimeter player. So if Jonas can play well like he's been playing, and you get guys like Kevon Looney and Jordan Bell getting rebounds and kind of playing really fast, the Warriors can be a really dangerous team, even without uh, DeMarcus Cousins. Up next, the Warriors have the Milwaukee Bucks who are, this could be a finals preview. I know my colleague Dieter Kurtenbach always talks about the weather in June in Milwaukee and how it's great. He thinks that uh, Milwaukee is going to be right there in June, and we'll see. The Milwaukee Bucks beat the Warriors a couple weeks back at home. Um, the Warriors did not play well in that game, and they're going to have some, trying to get some measure of revenge. So Milwaukee on Friday, we'll see you after that.